What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So it's Friday, it's the weekend, we made it. Congratulations. And if you are new to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, well, my friend, you just experienced and survived your first official shakeout. So give yourself a pat on the back and welcome to Team Volatility. Also, if it's your first time checking out the Crypto Zombie YouTube channel and you haven't got subscribed, what are you waiting for? We do this literally every single day. So having a look at, yeah, you know what? We'll get to that in just a second. We had a little bit of a crazy day yesterday, but I do want to talk about what is going on in the markets. I want to talk about the volatility, talk about whether or not we're actually still in a bull trend or should we be worried, okay? And also, there are some investors that are going absolutely Bitcoin crazy. You would not believe the amount of Bitcoin that these guys have, number one, been hoarding, and number two, are trying to accumulate currently as we speak. So we're going to get into that and see why maybe we got a lot more to go before we see anything else bad. But you know it is Bitcoin in crypto land. Let's give it a quick refresh live. So we're up $3 billion. Look at that. We've already started our recovery. We're up $3 billion since yesterday. Bitcoin dominance around 56%. Lots of red in the top. Lots of red. Is there anything up today on the front page? Oh, MonaCoin is up 62%. MonaCoin likes to do that every so often, I notice. Just kind of hangs out, does its thing, and then boom, 60%. Why? No idea. Couldn't tell you. Maximine Coin, Hypercash, Bitcoin, ABBC. Yeah, that's really it, guys. <laughs> then we go into stable coins and not not a very good 24 hours for the markets, um, as well as for the BitMEX liquidations, both the longs and the shorts. We had a pretty bad day for a lot of them yesterday. Very, very rough. OK, if we have a look at what is going on right now uh, at, over at Coin Farm, we have a we have signals from buy on Binance. Bitfinex is saying buy. Bitthumb is showing a sell, and we have Bitflyer saying buy. So it looks like they're buying. Let's have a look at what the longs and shorts are doing today. Okay, so the longs are down 58% with the longs up 51.44%. That's something to keep in mind. Okay, now having a look at what happened yesterday, did you guys actually watch the video when we were talking about maybe I said, remember, it kind of looked like it might have been forming a descending broadening wedge, right? And we were just sort of speculating on this. And at the time of yesterday's video, we were sitting right around here. And I literally said we could potentially break out. However, we also could go down to the bottom, but I didn't see us going much lower than here. Actually, you know what? Why don't I just play the clip? So if that was the case, you know, then we may potentially actually break out soon or we may come down one more time, which I mean, I don't know if we extend this down even lower, you know, just kind of having some fun here. You know, maybe Bitcoin does something. I mean, I don't know if we're going to go down this low that that's going back into the crucial zone, but we may have, you know, a little more uh, time or we may get stomped out by this eight thousand four hundred dollar level. But I just wanted to point that out because it was something that was quite interesting moving forward. Now, granted, I didn't think that we were going to make all of those moves within just a few hours, like the majority of that movement took place in just six hours. But you could see we had the breakout. We tested up here around nine thousand. $85. Then we came all the way down and look, we wicked just below it to around 7,970 and we were still supported by this overall trend line. So as you can see right here, we still are in the trend and the trend is your friend until the end. I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho. <laughs> Isn't he? And as we can see right here, the one thing that you do have to take as a positive from this is, yes, we had a massive pullback. I mean, what, what did we fall at the, from the peak? OK, from the top all the way down to the bottom. It was 12 percent. OK, but here's the thing. We're still putting in higher highs and we're still putting in higher lows. So realistically, there's no reason to be looking at this chart and be bearish, right? I mean, yes, we could have a potential black swan event and Bitcoin crashes all the way down to 6,400. But currently, based on what we're doing right now, it still looks quite bullish. Now, listen, there was something that a few people were pointing out. And the reason I want to bring this up is because we've already been affected by this once. So let's look at it, okay? Actually, twice, technically. So Right here, you can see we had the futures contracts. Now, obviously, you know, they're they're not open all the time, right? They close, they have hours. It's not like, you know, the regular,
regular crypto market. So right here, you can see there's a little bit of a gap, right? And the gap got filled. That's what they say. So that's why we had this fat finger dump, right? Then look, we had another gap right here. So they're saying maybe that's why we dumped. We had to fill the gap. Now there is one more gap um, that some people are pointing out, and that is right here. Uh, which unfortunately, you know, we would have to come all the way back down to these, you know, 7,200 to 7,600 levels if we were going to fill that gap. So are we necessarily going to? No, no, not necessarily. It's just something that I wanted to point out. You know, realistically, we did fill this one and we did fill this one. So I just wanted to point that out moving forward. But here's another situation that I really haven't seen a lot of people talk about. What if we're just in an ascending channel? What if we're just putting in higher highs and higher lows and that's it for right now, you know? I mean, obviously you could see, look at this right here where the VPVR uh, had its highest trading, which was basically at that psychological level of 8,000. You could see we came all the way down and look exactly where we stopped. I mean, we literally stopped right there on the line. So that is showing me that we still do have that support at that level. We have support uh, in the trend line. And yeah, so basically, guys, short term, everything is looking quite bullish. OK, that's really all I have to say. Uh, take that as you will. Now, I want to talk about what these investors are doing. And listen, if you're not bullish based on the charts, you're going to be bullish after you hear what's going on with these guys. So according to new reports, the biggest crypto investors purchased and get ready for this. 450,000 Bitcoin over the course of the past nine months, which means they were obviously accumulating it at the lows, right? That's what smart money does. So that's about 4 billion around today's rate. So Dyer published a report in which they stated that more than a quarter, or it's, it's closer to 26% roughly, of all Bitcoin are in the hands of crypto whales, okay? So last time, now just to put it in perspective, when Bitcoin was around these $8,000 levels that we're experiencing right now, it was about less than 20% of all Bitcoin that was held by these investors. So I just want to point out the same thing that happened in the traditional space where you got the one percenters who own everything, have all the you know, basically have, have all the money, right? Well, we don't want that to happen again in this space. And we know that because we're so early, we have the opportunity, but you're seeing the whales have increased from 20% to 26% just since last year. But here is the kicker. Did you guys see this story? Billionaire wants to buy 25% of all of Bitcoin in existence. What? So the fact that somebody out there is actually actively pursuing this, trying to actually buy 25% of all Bitcoin, why would you not be bullish? Let's scroll down. Let's have a look. So Elisa Dadiani launched Masinas last year, which is uh, basically uses Ethereum to sell fine art. We actually had spoken about it on the channel. So now Dadiani is rolling out a new initiative called Dadiani Syndicate, which is a peer-to-peer -peer digital asset trading platform for absurdly rich buyers, as they put it. And according to this, one of their clients is looking to buy a jaw-dropping amount of 25% of all Bitcoin in circulation. Now, first of all, who's going to like, where are you going to get 25% of all the Bitcoin in circulation? But you can see right here, they say that a number of entities want to dominate the market. And this isn't the first time that they've been asked for incredibly high purchases. 25% is insane, by the way. I just got to say that again. So Bitcoin circulating supply is, you know, 17.7 .7 million. So a 25% chunk would be 4.4 million Bitcoin worth about 38.5 billion at the time of making this video, which I mean, yes, like technically Jeff Bezos, he has that kind of money, right? He could buy 25% of the Bitcoin, but who's going to sell it to him? unless you just constantly accumulate like all the over-the-counter deals from the miners, right? But Matty Greenspan, you know, from eToro, he said that buying on this type of scale would have uh, an obvious impact on the price. So he says buying of this size is just going to push the price up and make this kind of accumulation even more expensive. There are ways to offset that kind of demand-based price increase, but after a certain level, there's not much you can do to prevent it, right? Eventually, you might run out of OTC solutions and you might have to start buying on exchanges, which have slippage, which will push the price up. So that's something I wanted to point out. And hey guys, if we're not in Bitcoin bull season, well then I don't know what to tell you because this guy, okay, James uh, Altcher, you might know him probably more familiar from uh, ads like this. Oh, a little scary. Anyway, so he went on and he said, this is what he said. 
He said there's 15 million millionaires around the world. All their financial advisors are going to say, hey, buy a Bitcoin. You need some exposure. Now, actually, I'm pretty sure there's more than 15 million millionaires. I think there's closer to 44 million millionaires. You can fact check it if you'd like. But that being said, 21 million Bitcoin ever in existence. Estimated that 4 million are lost forever. Well, you know, there's not enough. So if every you know, millionaire in the world, their financial advisor advised to them to own a Bitcoin, well, they can't. They can't. So just let that sink in and let's put that in a little bit of, oh God, this picture. Okay, so he looks like he's back and he's still saying that we could be on track for a $1 million Bitcoin by 2020. Now keep in mind, that's only a few months away. You know, I mean, we're already in 2019, 2020 is knocking, knocking on the door, right? So I wanted to just play this just for fun, okay? And see what he had. Now I'm not saying this guy's any kind of expert or anything. I'm just, for fun, let's just entertain what he has to say. Let's talk about the 27 interview you did. Sure. You also mentioned that you wouldn't be surprised if, if Bitcoin could possibly go to a million dollars yeah. by 2020. Well, I'll, tell, I'll explain the math. So, so you know, if, if cryptocurrencies, or let's say Bitcoin, if Bitcoin ends up replacing paper currency, and it solves so many problems of paper currency, it should partially or completely replace paper currency in the long run, how much paper currency is out there? It's about $200 trillion worth of paper currency is in the world. And there's only about $200 billion of cryptocurrency. So that's 100,000% from here. Uh, you know, that could give Bitcoin a price of, I don't know, $8 million. So $1 million is even a discount to where Bitcoin could eventually go. Now, when it actually gets there, who knows? It could be soon. It could be later. It could be, you know, but but the general direction has been up. So you're stick. So, OK, now we're going to a million dollars, but with stipulations. OK, so you can see, though, he talks about replacing it. Um, eventually, he goes on and talks about, you know, let's say one country was to just completely have a financial collapse, kind of similar to like what we've seen in you know places like Venezuela. We've also seen the Argentine peso actually at the all time high for Bitcoin comparative now because Bitcoin has just been a better store of value. Right. So, and if you want to talk about things that aren't just, you know, money focused, let's talk about what's actually happening in the background. And I know I'm probably in the way here, but as you can see, you know, the hash rate is virtually almost at an all time high, not quite yet, but we're almost there. Also, if we have a look at com confirmed transactions per day, once again, above my head, almost at an all time high yet again. If we come up here and have a look at total transaction fees, once again, almost at an all time high. And I know what you're saying. Oh, well, transaction fees being high, that's not good. Well, sure. I mean, as long as they don't become too expensive for the individual, but as far as the actual overall ecosystem, yeah, you want transactions to have, you know, these fees so that the miners will be rewarded, right? You don't want to be like Bitcoin SV miners making 58 bucks a day, uh, you know, processing fees. And also speaking of the miners, if we uh, have a look at this, check this out. So we have the difficulty at an all time high. This is really, really positive news. This means that miners, they're turning them on, they're mining Bitcoin, they're getting excited again, they're seeing the profitability in it. So this is very, very good. And you have to understand that it is that ecosystem. There is that balance between, you know, the investors, the miners, all, all of this, right? So just wanted to point that out. Very, very good fundamentals moving forward. Now, Obviously, we do talk about manipulation in this space, right? A lot of people say that. Well, here's the thing. You have Mario Draghi, head of European Central Bank, saying that cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin or anything like that are not really currencies. They are assets. A euro is a euro today, tomorrow, and a month. It's always a euro, and the ECB is behind the euro. Who's behind cryptocurrencies? So they are very, very risky assets. Yes, they are very risky assets, but that's exactly what makes something like Bitcoin so special is the fact that there is no single entity behind it. That is what they're missing. That is why the decentralized aspect of it, the censorship resistant aspect of it, that is what is so attractive. You see finance uh, journalist John Crudell says, as I've said it before, Bitcoin is nothing more than a confidence game. It's worth nothing if people suddenly lose their confidence in this fake digital currency. It's backed by nothing. It's the definition of a con. Everything else is tied to earnings, GDP, interest rates, etc. The problem is that Bitcoin is not tied to anything. Well, neither is U.S. dollars. And how big is your cash position? Right. Once again, completely missing the point that 
in and of itself is what makes Bitcoin so revolutionary. And you gotta love articles like this from the New York Post. Bitcoin will soon be worth zero. Pomp says, LOL, at this rate, New York Post will hit zero before Bitcoin. Now, this was put out May 20th. So let's see, uh, let's have a look and see. May 20th, let's see. So that was back here. All right, so we had a low on that day. And let's see where we are right now. So we're up 10%. Uh, since they put that out. <clears throat> don't listen to these guys. Do not listen to these guys. Also, don't forget, we're seeing all of this other interest and we're having margin trading now. Margin trading starting to get really big. Binance is saying that they're potentially going to roll it out. We also have uh, CCN uh, reporting over here that uh, Coinbase is maybe giving hints at uh, doing margin trading as well. Now, obviously, uh, margin trading for um, U.S. citizens. I don't know how they're going to do that because I know, for example, like BitMEX doesn't allow U.S. citizens to trade. I know on Binance, you know, you do have no KYC up to two Bitcoin, but if you want to trade more than that, they're probably not going to let you trade, right? Considering if you're a U.S. citizen. So that's honestly why I use Bybit. Bybit, you don't have any KYC. You just use a VPN. Actually, full transparency, <laughs> Guys, I actually put in a long around $8,106 and I am up 0.1369 Bitcoin. So yeah, I mean, that is why things like this are awesome using Bybit for leverage trading. Um, I'm not going to lie. I do feel a little bit weird shorting Bitcoin. Um, I, I like to wait for the pullbacks and then just kind of long it. So right now I'm using 10x leverage. If you guys are interested in trading, like for example, like I'm up 0.13 seven Bitcoin. I literally just put in a trade. Like you guys could check out, uh, I have my Bybit tutorial. I'll drop it above. Also, I do have my referral link below. If you're interested, you can use it. It does support the channel. But the one thing I do want to remind you guys though, I have to let you know this is that obviously margin trading, leverage trading is very dangerous. I actually came across this post this morning and I wanted to take a time just to talk about something a little serious for like five seconds. You can see right here, eight hours ago, I lost everything. I messed up. This is the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. I spent the entire bull market accumulating all of the this different I had one entire Bitcoin then I got introduced to BitMEX I started leverage trading got liquidated got liquidated etc you know he even shows pictures of um yeah his liquidations and stuff so it's pretty tough guys be careful and the thing that really freaked me out down here was he actually said um I feel scared I feel angry I'm freaking out I'm having thoughts of taking my own uh life which is pretty serious guys so do not ever do this. Do not risk more than you can afford to lose. Please, you should never be gambling with the rent money or anything like that. So I just wanted to say, yes, leverage trading is awesome. I use it. I'm up today. But guys, you know, look what happened with that liquidation yesterday. People lost on the way up. People lost on the way down. Where is it back here? Okay, look at that. You don't want to be one of those, so please be safe. And I just had to say that before we move on, guys. So also, EOS got added to Coinbase, probably picked one of the worst days to announce it. Didn't really have much of a move on the price. Actually, EOS ha had had a really nice rally leading up to it. So maybe that was the, maybe somebody knew, somebody might have known about it, possibly. But um, it says right here, it will not initially be available for residents of the United Kingdom or the state of New York. Moving on, I thought this would be a controversial topic, so let's have some fun in the comments. Let's let's have some fun, okay? So Weiss Ratings, who I do not follow, but every once in a while I like to read some of their silly tweets that they put out. We have XRP versus BTC. Why not both? They're not mutually exclusive. Bitcoin is an excellent store of value. XRP is an excellent payment network. They complement each other, and it is how XRP creators envisioned it. Okay. Comments. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Do you think that there's a place for Bitcoin it, or is Bitcoin like Bitcoin being a store of value or is that just a just a, a, an old thing and forget about it because XRP could be a store of value and it could be fast, right? But some people say XRP is centralized, but then XRP says that, well, they're actually more decentralized than Bitcoin. So wanted your opinion, haven't brought this topic up in a while, thought it would be fun. You know how I feel. I have no problem with XRP and Bitcoin. We could live harmoniously in the same space. Personally, it doesn't, doesn't affect me in the slightest, but maybe you have a very different opinion. I thought we'd have some fun with that conversation. You know, you do see stuff like this floating around the internet, the environment mental uh, impact of value. You know, obviously you have gold where they're mining it, whatever. And then, you know, they have to use gasoline, diesel, stuff like that. Then Bitcoin, electricity and XRP, which technically you still need some kind of way to communicate. Right. But so you can see that's basically how people feel about it. Wanted to bring that up. Also from the makers of CryptoKitties, we now have, what's this game called? 
What, what is this called? Cheese wizards. Cheese wizards. That's an interesting concept. So apparently players summon wizards, each of which is a non-fungible token. The winner gets a portion of the losing wizard's power. Using rock, paper, scissor logic, a winner is picked for each of the five spells cast. So there you go. They say that they've already earned over $275,000 in just a week after their launch. I'm not surprised people go absolutely crazy over this. But I want to show you this article from Forbes. And also, um, this came from the, the Telegram. Uh, group. So thank you so much. By the way, guys, if you haven't joined my Telegram group, it's absolutely free. Uh, link in the description. We just literally talk crypto all day. So look at this. Google is planning to restrict modern ad blocking Chrome extensions to enterprise users only according to 9to5Google. So the proposal dubbed Manifest V3 will see a major transformation to Chrome extensions that include a revamp of the permissions system. It will mean modern ad blockers, which use Chrome's web request API to block ads before they're downloaded, won't work. So you may potentially not be able to block ads anymore on Google, right? And this is only gonna be available to paid enterprise only. Now, Sean Wright, he's an independent security consultant, he said that we're starting to see Google's conflict of interest arising. Google relies on the revenue of advertising, so one can see why they would make such a move. So there's many other users who won't use uh, Chrome without the ad blocker, so it will see that a lot of people are gonna switch. Now this article actually points out Firefox. However, hello, Brave Browser guys, ad-free experience. In fact, it's such an ad-free experience that should you choose to watch ads, you get paid for it. And the last time that we checked it out, I think you can earn about 70 bucks a year uh, using uh, Brave Browser, but that's assuming that you know the price of the token doesn't go up. And a lot of people are like, ah, 70 bucks a year. That's stupid. Now, why would I do it? Well, I mean, like you're, you have an ad-free experience. You get to do the same exact thing you used to do and you're earning money. So, I mean, don't be so ungrateful. <laughs> Jesus, guys. Also, as you can see down here, um, you know, what's his name? Uh, Wright also said Brave is built upon Chromium, so all existing Chrome plugins and even themes work on it. So there you go. I mean, obviously, if these guys are going to just push people away, they're all, I mean, this is basically an advertisement for Brave. This, you know what I'm saying? So we are going to see these movements moving forward. And I mean, yeah, Brave Browser is great. If you hadn't had a chance to download it, you know, check it out. Link in the description. You guys get $5 worth of tokens if you want. Also, check this out. Samsung Electronics appears to be moving to integrate cryptocurrencies to Samsung Pay, which accounts for 80% of the South Korean simple payment market. The company's recently transferred the blockchain task force of the mobile business division to the service business division. But why even care about this space? Bitcoin's going to zero, right? Isn't that what those guys put out in that article? Also, Bitfinex CTO revealed that Tether is now launching on EOS as well. So we have... Tether on Omni, we have Tether on Ethereum as an ERC-20, we have Tether on uh, Tron, and now we're going to have Tether on EOS. So make sure that you guys don't send it to the wrong address. I could see that getting a little bit confusing. So they say, <clears throat> one of the main reasons is that we need it for the EOS Finex. Since it's on a chain exchange, we need Tether uh, EOS to offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys could read this basically, but th there you go. So we have Tether coming to yet another blockchain as well. Also, be careful out there. Crypto thieves are now embedding, I don't know how to say this, QLab or Qualib, the information stealing clipboard hijacking Trojan in YouTube videos promoting fake Bitcoin generation tools. So if you guys see any uh, ads before the video or anything about a, a Bitcoin generator tool, um, don't click it, don't do it. I, they don't show the ad. I wish they did. I wish they had a screenshot or a link to it. But they don't, so just be careful out there, guys. And, and, and honestly, just, just don't click anything in the beginning of the videos that looks scammy anyway, okay? And on a final note, there was a story from Medium that I wanted to talk about, and it was potentially about IOTA plagiarizing or stealing or copying some stuff from NKN. It was gonna be a big topic of today's discussion. It's been removed. I've gone over to Twitter, and it appears that the CTO at NKN has had a bit of a discussion, and it looks like they've sort of hashed it out. So yeah, it's nice to see uh, projects working things out. I like when there's not drama in the space. That's definitely good moving forward. And once again, before we go, you know, everyone's saying manipulation, manipulation, manipulation. Well, as this user says, manipulation is not always to blame for swings. Sometimes it's simply lack of liquidity. But as Tayaki says, sure, but manipulation works best in low 
liquidity markets. So on that note, guys, I do want to say it is Friday. Go out, enjoy the day. It's actually a beautiful day in New York. It's been raining for the past week. So I'm actually excited to enjoy the weekend. I hope you guys are too. Let's have a quick look at Bitcoin, see what's going on. All right, so we're still we're we're still chilling. We're good, guys. We're in the we're in the zone. You know, we're still moving towards the end of this wedge. So everything is looking quite all right. So thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If, if you haven't got uh, subscribed yet, definitely get subscribed. Um, hit the bell notification too, so you can get the updates right away. So that's it for me today. You guys know I love you. The reason that I do this every single day, obviously. My name is K Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.